Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name and it's just wonderful to have all of you this morning fellowshipping with us in the word of his grace. Invite a friend, a loved one, a family member. Let's have a wonderful time of studying the word of God. Co-hosting the broadcast this morning with me is my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Greetings everyone, welcome to the broadcast today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for life and we thank you for the gift of grace, the gift of Christ. We rejoice because we are found in you, not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of God by faith. And we rejoice that today as we look into the world, we acknowledge every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. So we pray for viewers that they are strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man, the eyes of each one's understanding flooded with light today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, today we're looking at important things in Bible study. We'll be looking at Bible study, important things in Bible study. We have seen meditation. We have seen your attitude towards Bible study. Yeah. We have seen be prayerful. And we're also going to be looking at take notes while studying. Take notes while studying, which is a very important attitude in Bible study. Go to church with writing materials. Every time you go to church, you need a note and a pen. And if you're in a church where you don't need a note and a pen, then it's not a church. It's just an entertainment center. A real church is a place where you are taught, where disciples are made. And the making of disciples will require making notes, taking notes, you know, writing down things you are taught so you can reference them and study them and understand them. So and moreover, these things stick better when you write them. Down. Yes, they you do. don't forget. It, it makes you follow the teaching, and you're able to jot down things that you're hearing, and it will make you remember it longer. Very important. So you need a note and a pen to write down what you heard. It is a sign of humility that you are learning. Write all the scriptures that are quoted, all things that are explained, so that you will go home and have something to meditate on. That's why you write all the notes. Let's look at some Bible examples. On in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, and especially the parchments. It means that Brother Paul was given to writing. I mean, he's looking for his books, he's looking for his parchments, which he left at Troas. He said, Bring them for me, bring my notes, bring my books, bring my study materials for me. It means he was given to writing. One key thing is this. If we all study the scriptures, we will arrive at the same point because the mm. scriptures don't have dual meaning. Mm -hmm. They mean the same thing. If everybody is studying, there will be no confusion. There will be no contradiction. Mm. You know, one person will not be saying one thing, another person is saying the same thing. Or like some preachers will say, I have my own message. Mm. You have your own message. There's no mm -hmm. such thing. There's only one message. And that message is Christ Jesus. If everybody is studying diligently, mm. all of us will be seeing the same thing. Mm. It is called the unity of the faith, mm. which is the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm. That's the whole essence of Bible study. To arrive at that point, Brother Paul says, till we all come to the unity of the faith, you know, which is the knowledge of the Son of God, to the full stature. Everybody ought to come there. And that's where everybody's going to arrive to. Eventually, we'll all arrive at Christ Jesus. Because that's the real unity of faith. Exactly. It's not churches coming together to form an association. Well, that's not the unity of faith. Mm -hmm. Unity of faith is when everybody, doesn't matter where you're standing from, we're all able to see Christ together. That's the unity of the faith, which is the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, so John 1.45, when you read for us. Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Say that Moses in the law, the prophet, all of them, everything they were writing is Jesus. So when you study well, all you're supposed to be seeing is Jesus. When you're taught well, all you're supposed to be hearing is Jesus. It doesn't matter whether it is taught from the law or it is preached from the prophets or it is preached from the New Testament. Everybody should be seeing Jesus because that's the revelation of the scriptures. Only read for us John 5.39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me. 
that he might have life. The entire scriptures testifies of Jesus. The message is Christ. That's why we say the Bible is a Christocentric material that carries with it a Christocentric message, a Christ-centered message. So when the scriptures are adequately and properly studied and rightly divided, we all arrive at one destination, the revelation of Jesus. Mm. And it is that revelation of Jesus that unveils the believer in him. That revelation of Jesus unveils everything that he has made available to the believer. The Bible is his book. The scriptures contain his story. So when you read the scriptures, one thing should stand out for you, Jesus. And if you read, you've not found Christ. You're not reading right. You're not reading well. If you read and you're confused and all you're seeing is wars and rumors of war and fights here and there, you're not reading well. If you read and all you're seeing is marriage, 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 you're not reading well. If you read and all you're seeing is sin, 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 you're not reading well. If you read and all you're seeing is what to do, what to do, what to do, you're not reading well. Because the scriptures are not about a record of do's and don'ts. The scriptures is not a book that contains the details of people's sins. The scriptures is one message, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And nothing more. Uh, Only, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what we're pointing out today, it's important while studying to take notes. If you don't take notes, it flies off your head. In fact, you get distracted while reading. So you need to put pen and paper together while reading something and jotting down what comes to your mind. If you take the whole 30 minutes reading and you're not able to pen down anything, it means we're not paying attention. You yeah. go over it again. Because when you start writing down something, it starts making sense. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost can even, you know, be yeah. enlightening some things so you have to write down. Yeah. So those are things. Because sometimes you have light on a certain scripture that really, and you pen it. Next time you again, you come to that scripture. You see that, and you see another thing again in that same scripture. So you keep writing like that. You know, when we're studying with the kids, yeah. every day we'll, we'll go through the book of Romans or even Proverbs when we read. Today you see some meaning. And I tell them, every time you are reading, write down the meanings that you find. And they were seeing different sides of scripture mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. couldn't have seen in one reading. Why? Because you're writing down. Tomorrow you see another one again, you write down. Right. So it's so crucial so, you know, to take notes while studying. I mean, you can't do without taking notes, except you're not a serious person. A student. Many of you, many believers actually, their attitude towards the word of God, if they went to school like that, they would have failed woefully in school. Exactly. And we're woefully, with this, woefully. This is and now you're, you're paying so much attention to secular things. You go to school, you have your notebook, you have your pen, you're focused, you're dedicated, you're committed, you study, you read, you write exams and pass just for secular knowledge. Mm. Then the real deal, mm. the real deal, your life you're depends. casual about it. You're not taking notes, you're not writing nothing, you're not cross-examining, you're not studying, you're not meditating, you're not seeking to have it inscribed in your system. I wonder how serious you are. You know, Jesus said to that woman, Martha, you are troubled about many things, yet one thing is needful, and your sister has chosen the better part that shall never be taken away from her. So to sit at the feet of Jesus to study is the better part. Is a choice. Mm. You make the choice and you commit yourself to the I'm choice. And then you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you give yourself diligently to study, the other day we saw that your profiting may yeah. appear to all. Definitely it's so idea. important. Your life starts changing. You know, and we always say, when you're very serious about studying God's word, you must get ready to unlearn so you can relearn. You cannot take what revelation of Jesus is coming now with your old understanding and patch them together. No, you've got to flush out and be ready to learn anew. And that gives you a new light, brings you into a new realm of living, changes you completely to live according to your realities in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Honey, lead us in the confession. I act on the word. I act on the word. And take Bible study seriously. I take Bible study seriously. And take notes seriously. And I take notes diligently. <laughs> I take notes diligently. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You must be diligent in taking notes, diligent, diligent in studying, yes. and diligent in acting on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Father, we pray for viewers today that this discipline, this lifestyle, this attitude will be inscribed in their system. That everyone hearing today will pay close attention, will take heed to the things we are sharing and make adjustments where necessary. 
in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We declare for every one of you, grow in grace, grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and abound unto every good work. Mm -hmm. Great grace is upon every one of you today. Your going out is blessed, your coming in is blessed, and we declare that your steps are ordered today. Enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, we want to encourage you to order for the Christocentric meal. You know, you can order for it directly from our office. The announcer will tell you how to get it and other books of this ministry, especially the latest new books we wrote on Welcome to God's Family, Don't Pack Your Bags Yet, and Living Your Best Life Now. All those are materials that are written to equip you and give you a robust understanding of your realities in Christ Jesus. So you can shape your world the way God designed for you to live. A life that is fulfilling. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you can go to Amazon and order from Amazon. It's Dr. Abel Damina. Once you type Dr. Abel Damina, all the books will pop. And you can order for them right there directly. You can use them to build up yourself and encourage more people to you know, get these materials. Because that's the whole essence of writing them. To equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just before we leave you today, only one last word for viewers. Yeah, you know, I think the casual approach we have to studying the word of God is because we think knowing it or understanding it is optional in our daily life. If you are not aware, knowing and understanding the word of God becomes critical when the exams of life face you. Yeah. Because then suddenly you are finding yourself ill equipped that's as a child of God now, not as an ordinary human being. Mm -hmm. So it's so crucial for you to take seriously study and understanding the word of God. When you study, you get to understand it. Yeah. So you need to read, you need to study, and you need to understand the word of God. Amen. Amen. Very important. Pay attention to God's word mm -hmm. because that's all you've got anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except you are just a joker mm -hmm. because that's all you've no, got so anyway. No. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, if you want to live, and live God's life on this earth and in the life to come. The word of God is not optional. It's compulsory. Mm -hmm. It's something you pay total attention to. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you pay attention to it because your life depends on it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. We're excited. We love you guys. Looking forward to spend more time with you in fellowship tomorrow. Share with people what's going on on this channel. And until then, this is Rachel and Abel Dabina saying that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. became a man to save man in the person of Jesus Christ the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the begotten of the father full of grace and truth and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace we saw that the mission statement of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1 is that she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin so we saw that Jesus is the savior of man, the sota, who gave us soteria. All right, soteria is salvation, or another word for it is sozo. It means to be preserved. It means to be saved. It means to be rescued. Rescued from sin and the dangers of sin. Not just from sin, but from, the, from sin itself and the consequences that came as a result of sin. In the book of Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack, Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us world, not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. That's God's ultimate plan. That's God's big plan for man. And Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 now says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should drift away. Next verse For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Look at the emotions he attached to it. So great salvation. Just like for God so loved the world. So great salvation. Alright. So how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The death that God meant when he said to Adam, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die, was separation, not extinction. So when Adam 
disobeyed God and transgressed, there was a separation between Adam and God. And we said the fall of Adam was the rise of Satan. We also established that that separation between God and man is the power of Satan. And we saw from God's word that Jesus died to reconcile us back to God. He paid for our sins by separation. He himself was separated so that in separation he can reconcile us. And we saw that we are saved by his life. So Jesus broke Satan's dominion over man vicariously by his separation. By his separation. That's why Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 now says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, the old English word for qualified, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. To be partakers of the inheritance. And what is that inheritance? Next verse. He says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son he has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us deliverance is living darkness to light into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have that is the inheritance the inheritance of the saints in light is we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That is the inheritance who hath delivered us. It was not a fight between Jesus and Satan. It was reconciliation. He has translated us. He delivered us. Hath translated us. So his death brought reconciliation and destroyed Satan's rulership over us. His death destroyed Satan's rulership what was satan's rulership separation his death destroyed satan's rulership which was separation what did his death provide it provided reconciliation or it took us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son it will be an insult for anybody to say he wants to deliver a believer it is a slight on the work of redemption it is actually a slap on what Jesus has done. Because no human being could deliver anybody until Jesus died. So deliverance is the complete, total, total work of Christ in death. That death was the price he paid to deliver you, to snatch you out from the kingdom of darkness and translate you into the kingdom of his dear son that movement from one kingdom to another is deliverance and that deliverance is total because that deliverance vicariously not only paid for sin but paid for everything that came with sin it paid for both sin and the consequences of sin in that one debt he paid for it all so when you receive Christ, you are delivered totally. You are completely delivered because we are saved by his life. We are saved by his life. You can't have his life and Satan is still contesting over ownership. It's not possible. We are saved by his life. Hallelujah. We are saved by his life so you are either in satan's separation or you are in god's reconciliation you are either in satan's separation or you are in god's reconciliation we come out of separation into reconciliation that is how satan's authority was broken because that dominion only come by man's choice to be separated from God. It only comes. The dominion of Satan comes. When you make the choice to be separated from God. What you are doing is. You are giving Satan total dominion over you. But the moment you receive the Lordship of Jesus. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. When you confess the Lordship of Jesus over you. Two people can lord over one person. 
The moment you receive the lordship of Jesus over you, the dominion of Satan is broken forever. With the heart man believes, with the mad confession is made unto soteria, unto salvation. When you receive the dominion of Jesus over your life, Satan's dominion was broken because Jesus is light, Satan is darkness, and I've never seen where light left the space for darkness. Even in the natural, light does not walk away from darkness. It is darkness that disappears. Disappears. Darkness does not go out by choice. Darkness does not go out by choice. It goes out by force. Light does not seek permission from darkness. No. When light invades a territory, its invasion of that territory is the total dismissal of darkness. When Jesus entered your heart, his entrance into your heart was the exit of Satan's dominion. Are we together here? Yeah. The believer cannot, cannot, does not owe the devil anything. That's why James speaking somewhere, he says, he says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Then he says, resist the devil. That means when you and God are reconciled, you are in a position to keep the devil on the run. When you and God are reconciled, that reconciliation is not going to happen by your efforts. That reconciliation is what redemption has provided. That reconciliation. We are saved by his life. So Jesus simply died in our place. We were to die, but he died our death. That's why when he rose up from the dead, when he met those two men on the way to Emmaus in Luke 24 verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Next verse. Then opened it their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Based on this, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Based on what he did in his death and his burial, what he suffered in his death and in his burial and his resurrection, remission. The word remission is forgiveness of sins should be preached to all nations because the price has been paid. Should be preached to all nations. Hallelujah. Watch this. Jesus was with them and began to teach them. He began to teach them. Look at verse 50 of that Luke 24. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. 51. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He has spent time teaching and teaching them for 40 days. And at the end of 40 days, he left. He had established them, and it was Luke who captured this. Then look at Acts chapter 1 verse 1. The former trithes have I made Otiophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them 40 days. Jesus did 40 days of glory. He was explaining to them gloriously. What his death, burial and resurrection means. He taught for 40 good days. Explaining to them. 
what has happened, what took place, what it means to mankind. And on the 40th day after teaching, he went up. Now, what he taught them is what they have taught us in the epistles. Paul was in there, remember? Paul got advanced classes by revelation. It was a 40-day seminar. So why did he point them to the kingdom of God? Well, again, remember how that he has delivered us from darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. He has transitioned us from we that we are not a people to now the people of God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And he was teaching them what had happened from the cross to the throne. What had happened from the cross to the throne. The whole events of what happened from the cross to the throne is where you find the full details of redemption. The full details of redemption. You will discover that a man like Peter who told Jesus, why will this happen to you? Didn't know what was going on. They were with Jesus but didn't understand what he meant. When Jesus said, I will die, Peter rebuked him and said, don't be talking like that, not while I am here. That's why Jesus said, you suffer us not the things of God. That means what God's plan has been from time is for me to provide redemption by death. So Peter, any attempt to stop me from that means you are an enemy of God's plan. That's why I told him, get it behind me, Satan. Because only Satan could have been speaking through you. To fight what was going to be beneficial to you and to those after you. Meaning they didn't know. The disciples didn't even understand. They were walking with Jesus. But they didn't even understand what was going on to them. It was just martyrdom. Until Jesus took time to teach them. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer.